I did my undergraduate uh, at Caltech. Um, in my last year in particular, I took a lot of um, advanced graduate courses having to do with like, general relativity and the standard model. Um, and I came here and um, started out uh, doing a lot of reading um, about more exotic field theories and, uh, uh, and exotic mathematics to explain those. One of the first projects that I started working on was uh, gravitational lensing. Um, so not only can we look at um, the CMB light itself, we can also look at distortions in the CMB uh, that are generated by large-scale structure in the universe. Uh, in addition to that, I've also um, started doing some, some, uh, some other work dealing with Lorentz violations. Um, Lorentz symmetry is one of the, sort of the laws of the universe that we so far I've not seen violated, um, but um, one, of the, one of the consequences of not really knowing an underlying theory that unites gravity and quantum mechanics, this underlying theory might, at higher energies, violate the Lorentz symmetry that we otherwise see in the world around us. Pretty proud of uh, uh, working on, on one, one paper that recently got published, but really it's a, a test of, of Bell's inequality. Um, it's, a, it's a way that we know that, that quantum mechanics is not a local deterministic realistic theory. If you think about a, a pixel on our telescope um, scanning across the sky, um, at least for Polar Bear 1, you've got this, um, this cross-hatch uh, dipole, you know, set of dipole antennas. It's got two orientations. Um, so really, you're, you're looking at, at two data streams from, from a, a given pixel. Uh, the idea that you should have in mind is that you've, you've got these, these time streams of, of two, um, two polarizations. Um, and from there, you can take that, that, that set of time streams, turn, um, um, figure out where exactly the telescope was pointing at every given time period, and you can uh, assign each of those measurements to a particular location on the sky. And if you build this up over many, many observations, you can, you can make a two-dimensional map of what the CMB looks like, not just the intensity, but also um, the Stokes Q and U parameters. Um, and as, as far as I'm concerned, um, uh, what, what I want to look at at the end is uh, the E and B modes um, that we can uh, derive as a transformation of the Stokes Q and Q parameters. And the reason that I look at, that I look at E and B modes is that um, one of those is, is much bigger than the other. Um, the E modes are, are parity even and they have uh, a pretty, pretty well-known uh, mechanism of generation. The B modes um, uh, are only generated by more exotic physics, one of them being uh, gravitational waves, but, if, but you know, there's many other sources that could be out there. Um, gravitational len lensing is one that we know of, um, but even more exotic physics like Lorentz violations or, um, or, or galactic foregrounds or um, stuff like that can, can also generate B modes. So I'm near the end. This summer I uh, plan to graduate and get my PhD in physics. Um, it's been a it's been a long ride, and I still uh, still trying to figure out what I want to do next, actually. Um, but you know, there's I'm told there's plenty of options.